everybody. How you doing? Well, that's good. Welcome to PHLY Flyers. My name is Bill Matz. I'm your director of fun and games for the evening. Joining me tonight is Broad Street Hockey's own Kelly Hinkle. <laughs> it's warm in there, fam. I'm going to be honest with you. It seems uh, uncomfortable. In the winter, that was a lot of fun, but I'm now sweating already. <laughs> Probably has nothing to do with my lifestyle and everything to do with the mask. Anyway, the Flyers have done it. They have won a Metropolitan Division game, Kelly Hinkle. Oh, six and four in their last 10 Metro division games. They have not won one since December 19th, 2023, three, two in overtime over the devils. Ofer against the Metro division in calendar year, 2024. So of course, of course, tonight on the heels of an eight game losing streak and all hope being lost, they go into the world's most famous train station, Mm -hmm. and beat the President's Trophy leading, and that still uh, still stands, Dallas Stars one point back, last I checked, they're down 2-0 tonight. President's Trophy leading New York Rangers 4-1 to to, uh, keep hope alive for at least another day. Wow. Um... We're going to show poll results, a poll I took before the game and throughout the game about what people were feeling. You know, the poll I ran the other day, uh, do you want to see them lose out? Do you want to see them try to get back in this thing? And it was a whole lot of lose out. And then, yeah, this was from last game after the first period. And it was 75-25. And it started to even out a little as it ran. Mm -hmm. And so pregame tonight, I asked... Do you want to see the Flyers beat the Rangers and go from there? Let's just see what happens, or let's just lose out, see if we can fall to maybe that ninth spot uh, in the uh, draft lottery odds and see if we can get a little lottery luck on top of that. And hey. basically 50-50, lose out was up big. It was. Uh, I think I left this up through the game. So I think as the Flyers maybe scored first, it started to come around a little. Uh, the comments, the replies underneath are very split of like, Oh, the the culture truthers want to see uh, this team get wrecked in the playoffs, maybe, rather than help the lottery odds or whatever. And the other people are just the delusional optimists uh, of whom, you know, a group you you represent. It's Sometimes. one of the reasons I want you here tonight. Yeah. Uh, and it worked out perfectly. Just before we get into any of the how, what, why, whatever. What'd you think tonight, Hanks? Um, I am regrettably all the way back in. I mean, as is my way. I saw your poll on Twitter this afternoon and I voted lose out because that's where I was mentally at the time. I am no longer there mentally. I am 100% back in on the playoffs because the Flyers looked great tonight. They looked so good. Travis Konechny, who I know Charlie says we've been too hard on him, but you and I have been complaining about him for weeks. He was all over the ice. He looked incredible. Sam Erson. NHL goaltender like it was just a well-played well-executed really good hockey game that was like reminiscent of what we saw from them four months ago you held the Rangers to 25 shots on goal Sam Harrison stops 24 of them for a 960 save percentage a lot of guys had bounce back performances tonight I think we'll start with Sam Harrison Sammy uh, it, is it just this simple now, listen, we've done some shows recently where we go, listen, we are not discounting how bad the goaltending has been. And if you saw the tweet today about, like, listen, even during this eight-game losing streak, the Corsi numbers, blah, 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 they're all pretty at least good, if not very good. And then you look at they're getting 760 goaltending during this, and the next closest team is, like, 830 or something. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't win like that. I keep saying, if you have McKinnon and McDavid and get 760, you're still going to lose? Yeah. I know there's a lot of things that went wrong. And even my reply to that, because someone tagged me in it, was like, I know that the goalies have been bad. Also, you know how you make a goalie look bad when there's unchecked dudes in front of the, like on the doorstep putting home slam dunks? Is it just as simple as if the goalies are normal? I'm not even saying good. Tonight, Erickson was good. But if they're just fucking normal, this is a playoff team? So a few games ago when I was also here for post game, we were sitting on the couch and I had a weird revelation that just popped into my head that I was like, oh shit, it's just goaltending. Like that's literally it. Goaltending good, team good. Goaltending bad, team bad. And honestly, 
I know with Charlie not being here, I'm allowed to say whatever I want because he can't tell me that. Charlie I'm dumb. will be along in a little bit. He's he up can't at, hear me now. He's up at MSG, <laughs> but you know he's not talking right now. No. Um, so, like, uh, it may seem reductive, but I do kind of think that the entire reason why these last eight games were so bad is the goaltending. And here's why. So I forget where I heard him say it. Somewhere I heard Jason Mertidis, who we all know is a goaltender. I heard him talk about the fact that when the goaltending is bad, it's not just that the goaltending is bad. It's that the whole team in front starts to play differently yes. because the goaltending is bad. And we talked about how they've lost their structure. If yes. you believe you can't give up any shot. Everything like, gets jumbly. All of a sudden, everyone's doing a bunch of shit they're not supposed right. to do because it's like, let's take away the most obvious things. And then if the goalie has to stop one, he'll do it because it's open. Like it's yeah. just him in the shoot, not a high difficulty shot. He'll stop it. When that's in your mind that mm -hmm. no, man, like it could be a 50 foot shot. It ain't going in or it's going to go in. You start to play differently. And here's the thing tonight. They got some big saves from Arison early. And I have a feeling that that might have put back in their head, like, okay, shit, maybe he's got it tonight. Because I'm sure they're not idiots. They watch or they see the results the same as we do. When Arison's on, he's on. When he's off, he's off. And so maybe they saw him being on early in the game and they were like, okay, maybe, maybe we can play a hockey game tonight. And it just kind of trickled up from there. And I, I really do think that it, it might have just been the shitty goaltending. It was definitely a huge part of it. I mean, Erson, we've seen his numbers since February 15th. He just fell off a cliff. Uh, the backups have been bad to say. Like, bad isn't even where you begin to talk about. They were I mean, bad. Peterson. Uh, Sandstrom. Yeah, Sandstrom. And then Fedotov. He had that nice little game in relief where he looked okay. And then it's a pass. it didn't. I mean... I know I've been I was hard on him, but well, like what you know. what the fuck? What, I, it, what are you gonna ask? It wasn't good. What are you gonna ask of the guy? I know. But whoever has been in net, mm -hmm. it's been awful. And then Airson suddenly like okay, well most nights at least though we get him and he's been good. When that started to just really be horrible, we started to see this team look like years past, where it is chickens with the heads cut off in the defensive zone, and that affects everything because. This team, yes, they were a rush offense. They were fun to watch. But it all started with, if we do what we're supposed to do defensively, yes. it results in two-on-ones and breakaways, and you should score in those situations. They did a lot. All of a sudden, all that went away, and we got what we got, the eight-game losing streak. Yeah. You know, what, six or seven of those to lottery teams. It was really, really rough. And I see we have a super chat from our uh, from boss man. Friend Vince. of the pod. And he's Vince back. He's back with the why not That's us. Right. I love it, Vince. I love the delusional optimism. It's part of what makes being a fan great because yes. listen, I was out. I was in the fuck it. Let's lose out. out. I was in the let's lose out. Yeah. Let's try to finish with the ninth best lottery odds situation. Not anymore. And I realize a miracle has to happen. But on our last show, what was it yesterday? We talked about how these final three games, even if they don't result in wins, even if they don't result in making the playoffs, I don't want to go into the offseason talking about how this team quit. Yeah. And maybe this is too little too late. Maybe they did blow it. It's going to take a lot to get in now. But I don't want to be having this conversation again. No. I can't. I, just, I, I mean, I'll do it. But I really don't have it in me. <laughs> You don't want to. Yeah, I truly Listen, do not want to. So they, they just have to win. They have to win two games. That's all they got to do. I Against, mean, I, I know other things have to happen as well, but I'm not concerned with those win things. Win your games and see what happens. Win your games and see what happens. Tonight, they got a little bit of help. The stupid Penguins blew it against the Wings. That uh, went to overtime. That was less than did. ideal. Um, the Caps were losing. Great news. The Habs were The Caps were lose 4-2 to the Sabres. The Sabres are tangentially in it, but... Uh, Not really. Yeah. The Habs were winning last time I checked. I don't know if they still are. Canadians, so that's, that's two minutes left, 2-2 two, two with the Isles, of course. So Dang that'll it. go to OT. Uh, are the Isles going to OT? What's new there? Come on. Uh, I, they need a lot to happen. They I don't, do. I don't know the scenarios. I'll figure out the scenarios. We'll have a better understanding of them on Saturday's postgame show, I promise. But right now, it's simply about the Flyers not finishing the season like in losers. a way that erased the first 60, yes. 65 games. Like, that's what, it, that's what it's about. 
don't negate all the hard work you did by finishing the season the way so many seasons have finished prior to yeah. this, where it's like, this isn't even an NHL don't team. Don't be fucking losers. The yes. super chats are coming in. I'm hot. seeing the super chats. Right. I see here one from uh, Patrick, Patrick Spear. Uh, right when I'm out, they pull me That's back right. in. Absolutely. Do we see Fedotov any other no. times this season? Love everything you guys are doing. Can't wait for off-season speculation to begin. I can put off the off-season a little bit after tonight. Um, I would say the only chance we see Fedotov again is in a relief situation. If yeah. Erson suddenly loses it again, we might see Fedotov. But I, I don't think... No. You can go away from your no. your guy. Not after tonight. After, especially after a performance great. like tonight. 24 of 25 against one of the best teams in the league. Looks great. Yeah. Uh, and the other super chat here from uh, Permafrost X. Bill, go full on mullet if the fly. Uh, Bill, go full on mullet if the flyers get in. Bill has a wife, you guys. She's got to look at him. I know. And she's very supportive of all my dumb shit. Go full um, Scott Hartnell. Just, just Oh, I think she'd prefer mullet over Hartnell. If I'm she, watching the game at home and she sees Hartnell, she's just like, <laughs> what is he doing? He was like a normal, even with the big fro, he was a normal looking guy. And yeah. now he's ridiculous. Um, if they win around, I'll go mullet. How about that? If they get in and win around, I'll do mullet. I like it. But uh, I guess that's a good like, time. I don't really want it. Now's a good time to get into the first thing I have to do tonight. So we had a super chat a couple of shows ago from uh, K Red, and K Red's one of our of most uh, one of our most dedicated listeners. He's always showing up in the chat. He always watches us live, and he saw my appearance on the Gargano show on Monday, and he wanted to know about the idea of me being sent to wrestling school as uh, PHLY content. Um, what Monster Factory in Jersey is a very highly thought of wrestling school. It's one of the best in the nation. Danny Cage runs it. He's an excellent trainer. And I guess the opportunity has uh, arisen for me to go to wrestling school. Um, something I've wanted to do since I was a kid, but now like I'm 35 with a wife and obviously I have fallen completely out of athletic shape. I am contemplating it. Uh, there's some things we have to work out, but I am leaning very much yes. And I, uh, I'll tell you, before I start, though, because I want to do this for real. I have too much respect for what it is to, like, go into this and half-ass it and, like, you know, I'm just a so big excited. fat loser and I die on day one. Like, I, I don't want to do that. So I have to, like, get myself into some semblance of athletic shape before I start. And I got to tell you, factor meals... You're going to play a big part in this. Right. We could all probably stand to eat a little better, myself especially. Uh, after a long day of work, commutes, dealing with the world, who wants to cook? And then do all that cleaning afterwards. And you can only even start that process if you had the foresight to go to the grocery store first. Who wants to do all that? So what do we do? I know, personally, I hit the delivery apps and get something way too expensive and probably not all that great for me rather than put in the work of like meal prep and all that stuff. But all that is changing with Factor. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, chef crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto Friendly. And you have two-minute meals Fuel up fast with Factors, restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat up and eat whenever you are, which comes in handy if, say, three to four nights a week, you're watching hockey games at the PHLY studios, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, no prep, no mess meals. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. And you sign up and save. They've done the math for you. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. So head to factormeals.com slash flyers50 and use code flyers50 to get 50% off. That's code flyers50 at factormeals.com slash flyers50 to get 50% off today. All right. More so super chats. We have more super chats. People are just flying in. That's great. Everyone's that's, in a great mood. Uh, Bill will headline WrestleMania 41, Book It Hunter. Yes. Um, Bill just wants to survive a couple of weeks of wrestling school. That was Vince trying to talk me into it was like, what if you're great at this? Yeah. Like, what if, you know, pigs fly out of my ass? <laughs> but it, no, it's, it's an exciting proposition and I'm yes. looking forward to it. And the next one. 
Uh, geez, the the WWE wrestlers are no mats for <laughs> like mats like mats. I like that. Thank you, Permafrost, uh, and thank you for these you super chats. The Let's get back to the hockey. I'm sure oh, we've yeah, lost that. like half of our audience, but it's my show. I get to talk about nonsense sometimes. So I guess we'll go back to the goaltending. Yeah. Tonight was a very strong bounce back performance for Sam Erson, was. who has been dreadful, real bad uh, in the last few weeks, despite. Listen, and John Tortorella said it a few days ago. I know the numbers aren't good, but we're not here without him, and he's dead tired. Do you think this was a one-off performance? Or maybe he's got a second, third, twelfth wind, and he can carry them for the next two games? I mean, who knows? Because goalies. Like, who knows? Honestly. I mean, yeah. But one thing that I think is encouraging is that the team defense overall tonight looked really good. And if they can carry that over into the next game, that's certainly going to help Erson have another good performance because they won't be giving up nonsense left and right. Um, there were a ton of takeaways in front of Erison tonight, a ton of really good forechecking and backchecking and paychecking. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how you can predict such a thing. I would like to hope that, Erson's got a little boost of confidence from this game, a little second or third wind, and he can go into these last two games, which should be easier than this one. The Flyers blocked 19 shots tonight. Yeah. That's a big part of who That's they great. are. It's it, it, one, it just keeps their goalies cleaner. Mm -hmm. It's part of their system blocking shots. John Tortorella, it's been a, I, I mean, you remember 2004, it was the most frustrating shit in the world where the Flyers just couldn't get a shot through yeah. on Happy Bullen, and it was like, God damn it, just get one through. <laughs> it is a big part of who they are, and it fuels their transition game. Yes. It can essentially act as a takeaway sometimes where suddenly they, oh, they have a shot attempt. No, we're going the other way. Mm -hmm. All of that, I think, works in tandem with the goaltending, yes. and it worked tonight. That's yes. huge. Yeah, and I think they feed off each other. Like I said, I think those early saves from Arison – let the team know that he was going to have it tonight. And as a result, they were able to settle back into, like you were saying, the structure that they know works. And as a result, everything looked better. The it's almost like it's a team sport. Almost, yeah. <laughs> almost like, you know, everyone's got to work together in order for them to win hockey games. What's this? Uh, what's Another this neck, super chat? Next super chat. Uh, wow, big one from Timbo Slice. Remember, Cody, <laughs> to lose first to finish the story. <laughs> Flyers finish the this story is the next year. Show. I like 2024 25 Stanley Cup champs. I love it. Yeah, they'll finish the story next year. Why not? Maybe, uh, maybe Mishkov comes over unexpectedly. He's the rock, fuels the whole thing. Who knows? Many people um, are saying this. A huge part of tonight's game. Mm -hmm. A guy I criticized pretty thoroughly on yesterday's show. Travis Connect. You got him going again. I, I don't again. want to take all the credit for it, but yes, but I do, you actually. Should. Uh Travis Connect tonight, a goal tonight, a goal and an assist, plus two, four shots and a hit, 1704 time on ice. It doesn't look like anyone, uh, no forwards played more than him. Ha Hathaway also played 1704. Uh, but he was man, it's I know last uh, yesterday, like, how can I reverse my position this quickly? The idea of Trading him, not resigning him, whatever. Because you can. Uh, That's how it works. I know. His sequence that uh, set up his eventual goal, and it's his 32nd to set a new career high. Yeah. He has a takeaway in the defensive zone, starts the rush the other way, is then the trailer gets the puck and beats John Quick. That's the connection we saw all year. Yes. It wired the puck to beat him. Almost had another one on a breakaway. I don't know how. Like, his move worked too well. Yeah. Like, Quick sold out too fastly. He thought he was going to have to beat him five hole. It was no. like, no, he's down. And he's somehow the didn't net. score. Yeah. Like, had the whole <laughs> but this is the Travis Konechny we just fucking love. Like, this is the TK. Yeah. One game. And I'm like. Yeah, I know. Eight times eight. Yeah. <laughs> because that's how and this Maybe works. that's a bad idea. But eh, eh, who's to say? He if is, you get this guy every night, is it a bad idea? He is nah. the straw that stirs the drink. And it's yes. just so much. Like imagine this now. What's he at? Uh, we're, so he's a goal and an assist tonight. So he ends up with uh, thirty-five. He's got thirty-two goals, thirty-five assists, so sixty-seven points on a team that literally cannot score 
what could he be if you put real players around him? Yep. Young players who are as adept at this style uh, as he is. He is obviously taken to this John Tortorella style of offense. It's really hard to watch him play this way and feel the way I have for the last couple of weeks. I saw some people um, either on Twitter or in your comments during shows while Konechny was looking like garbage um, saying that if you resign him, he's going to be the next Drew. I'm guessing implying that he's going to be the guy. I think I said it. Did you say it? Oh, like I guess implying that like he's just going to be good and they're not going to build a team around. Like, I don't really know what the implication. There My is. implication was we're going to do it. And even if he's good, like watching what they were the last couple weeks, it's going to be like in year six of the eight year deal. You know, we fucking wasted Travis Konechny. And it's but not even like an indicate. It's not even an indictment of him, really, as it is just yes. where they're going to be. But what if they don't waste Travis Konechny? Again, I feel like we keep forgetting, and it's easy to, that there is an entirely new group of people running this team. We don't know yet if they're going to fuck it up. They might. But right now, we don't know. And there's a very solid chance that, unlike the previous regimes who did, in fact, waste Claude Giroux's entire career, they could sign Travis Konechny 8 to 8, 8 by 8, and build a team around him that can win. Like, that is a plausible result for all of this. And I think people have to keep that in mind. Also, after watching him tonight, the energy all over the ice, looking just like great passing takeaways like he was just everywhere and he looked awesome I want a player like that on my team and it's always been you know they didn't it, to keep the analogy like they didn't build around Claude Giroux yeah I think he was good enough to be if not the best at least co-best player on a Stanley Cup champion 100 if you had a bunch of really good next tier guys like if you had six Travis connect you know yeah something like that Konechny will not be the guy. He will no. be a major piece. He might play on the first line with the guy. He would not be the one we're looking to like you. You need to win us the game. Well, here's the thing. All of this hinges on Mishkov being that guy. Like, that's, like, if he's not that guy, like, all of this is fucked anyway. So, like, we need him to be that guy. And... The only thing that I can do as a fan is just believe that he's going to be because every indication seems to suggest that he will be. If he's not, then we're fucked. But he's going to be that guy. So, you know, we need some more pieces, obviously. A center would be very nice. Um, sure would. Yeah, but I... Oh, my God, there's like 17 Super Chats. Oh, my God. Everyone's got to chill. <laughs> I'm just uh, going to give where you did all we my leave Venmo. Off? Where do we leave... Vince says I'm going to be good at being a wrestler. Of course He's you proud of me. I love you, Vince. You're just, I've never had a boss. I've had, I've been lucky to have in this business a ton of really good bosses, plus the people at SB Nation. Um, <laughs> I, it was like putting them outside. The oh, okay, I got yeah, you. Yeah, like got plus them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. But Vince is, he's oh, one of the most rules, encouraging dude. people ever. Uh, it's a delight to work here. What do we have? Uh, Permafrost again. Uh, real talk is Zegris a legit possibility for us. I much the way they were willing to part with Jamie Drysdale, the Ducks, because they have so many defensemen coming in the pipeline. You do look at them and go, they have a bunch of forwards. They do. The off season uh, contract negotiations with Zegris, much like Drysdale, were contentious, mm -hmm. and they don't seem to love him there. No. There is a working relationship now. Obviously, they made one trade with the Ducks, and we saw in you know previous regimes, it's like you tend to go back to the well a yeah. lot. I think it's a possibility. Whether they have the assets to make it happen, I have no idea what they're willing to part with. You know, like bringing Zegers in because, like, oh, you know, he's boys with Cam York. Like, it's hard to think Cam York wouldn't be part of that or. I, I don't know. I have I no know. idea. I think it's it's not not a possibility is what I'll say. Yeah. And he does fit a need. He Whether does. he's a true 1C or not, That's time the thing. will he's tell. He's also a little bit of a project, too. Yeah, he's How not. How many projects do you want to take on? He's not exactly like a can't-miss superstar. Mm -hmm. He's very good. 
but I do look at him kind of like another Konechny, where it's, all right, we made this great trade. We got a, we got a really good yeah. player. We still need more. Yeah, you know? yeah, right, like, yeah. And how many assets do you want to give up for a guy who doesn't solve the problem? We do have a lot of winners. And from there, uh, we have another one from Rory. Will Torts be visiting fam or only after an L? Oh, um, I get it. Oh, is he like not talking to the press? Listen, I'm sure he's out I there. I am tonight. willing to buy. I mean, it's not as if there aren't restaurants in the places that he was uh, having family visit. I'm willing to buy that he he had family in town the last couple times. Uh, but you know who will be visiting us? Who's that? It is Philadelphia's number one hockey beat Charlie. reporter. It is Charlie O'Connor. He is live Jeff. at the world's most famous train station. Charlie. Of course they won tonight, right? Of course they did. It's classic Flyers. <laughs> I, I like. I don't even. What were your impressions of tonight's uh, four, like resounding victory over the President's Trophy leaders? Yeah, I just think that enough things broke their way that allowed them to have the confidence to play the type of game they needed to play. They get the first goal. I thought that was huge. Number two. It was abundantly clear, which we haven't had for quite a while, it was abundantly clear in the first period that Sam Harrison was on his game. And I think the team fed off that. Second, well, third, I guess, because the first was the first goal. Second was Harrison. Third was they finally get a bounce. Like, Keandre Miller puts the puck in his own net off of a good bounce. <laughs> and I just think those three things, the, the fact they finally were getting some stops, the fact they got the first goal so they weren't chasing the game, and then finally the fact they actually get a good bounce. I think that allowed them to loosen up and play their game because this was becoming a team that was waiting for something bad to happen. And once it became clear tonight that that bad thing wasn't going to happen, that they were finally getting some things to go their way, I think they just were able to loosen up and play the way they know they can play. I really do think that that's more or less what happened. Like, look, the Rangers got their chances. The Rangers actually, I don't know what the... Uh, what the advanced metrics came out to at the end of the game, but for the bulk of the game, the Rangers were ahead in expected goals. Yeah, the Rangers finished with 3.72 expected goals. The Flyers finished with uh, 2.20. So Rangers, from a scoring chance standpoint, from a raw chance standpoint, outplayed the Flyers. And you know what? They should. They're a better team than the Flyers. But I just got the sense that for the first time in a couple weeks, the Flyers were expecting things to go right rather than waiting for something to go wrong. And they got some bounces, they get a win. Good for them. Charlie, the thing we were talking about right before you came on is um, my flip-flopping and hypocrisy. Uh, obviously, well, yesterday, we, you we never have a that, show. <laughs> yesterday we have a show, and I am ready to move on from Travis Konechny. Uh, there's absolutely no point in keeping him. They're just going to waste him the way they did Claude Giroux. And tonight... Um, pounding the table on eight by eight, obviously. Uh, Sam Harrison was huge, getting the bounce huge, but TK being the straw that stirs the drink, how important was that for them tonight? It was obvious from the very beginning of the first period that they were getting good Travis Konechny. And yeah. I made the argument on the last two shows I've been on that I didn't believe Konechny on Tuesday was lacking energy. I thought he was trying. I thought it was very obvious that he was flying around trying to do stuff. I just thought it was completely misdirected and misguided energy, and it wasn't actually helping anything. But I, I never questioned his effort. I never questioned how much he cared in that game. He just was a mess. He was running around like a chicken with his head cut off. But he was running. He was running a lot. Well, this game, he was running just as much, but it was control. It was in the right direction. It was, it was creating chances in transition. It was attacking the guy with the puck and getting the puck from him. This was a vintage Konechny game. You know, he, that, that third goal, that's all him. You know, he, he creates the, the circumstances for the goal mm -hmm. with his play in the defensive zone, and then he trails the play, puts himself in position for a pass, and rips it home. John Tortorella actually specifically noted how important he felt that third goal was, just in terms of giving the team not just breathing room, but the ability to exhale a little bit in between the second and third periods rather than be worried like oh god we're only one up on these on these guys we could blow this it was just enough that allowed them in the in the second intermission not to be so worried and just be like yeah we can we can close this out this is doable 
that was a big goal. But this it wasn't just the goal. You know, he he sets up the Cam York goal to start the game. Mm-hmm. He completely torches Kay Andre Miller on the rush, basically makes the dude fall down. It was more or less like a basketball crossover, essentially. <laughs> and then he sets up Cam York. And you just knew. You knew this was going to be a good Travis Konechny game. You know, we asked Noah Cates. We asked Sam Harrison about it after the game. They both kind of marveled at it. They all know he's their most talented player. It's abundantly clear. And they know that he has not given that level over the last couple of weeks. Tonight, he gave that level, and the Flyers won. And that's no coincidence. When your best players play real well, you tend to win games. Their best player played real well, they won. I thought uh, another guy who they're very much depending on, not just this year, but they need him to be some semblance of okay, at least, in the next few seasons is Sean Couturier. Mm. Uh, ends up playing 16 minutes tonight. I thought that's a good sign. Gets the assist on the Noah Cates goal. These are encouraging things. No, like, I thought Sean Couturier was effective tonight. What did you think? Yeah, Yeah, I think he was fine. I I think he has another gear. I hope he has another gear. But he was put back in the top nine. They kind of reworked that fourth line to be uh, more or less Lawton, Atkinson, and Farabee, which fair. Um, Farabee doesn't deserve to be in the top nine right now, and Lawton hasn't been playing all that well recently either, to be honest with you. Not that anybody has. But they gave Couturier another shot in the top nine. I, did, I personally didn't think he was amazing, but I thought he was fine. He did his job. He, you know, he hung in there, and yeah, they need, we talked about this, they need Sean Couturier to be a top six quality center if they want to be the team from the first 50. I don't think he was a top six quality center tonight, but I think he was fine. And given the fact that they had great Travis Konechny and they had good Sam Harrison, that was enough. Charlie, it looks like uh, Nick Sealer and Jamie Drysdale played third pair of minutes tonight. And, like, resoundingly so. I mean, after last game, what can yeah, you expect? Fair. But I just – can you depend on Eric Johnson and Igor Zamula? I don't think – and Charlie, we've lo- – okay, there he is. No, Got a little they just turned the lights off. the train they station, the- everyone. They- it's fine. I'm still here. Okay. Uh, Joe, just what did you think of the defensive deployment tonight? Well, I specifically asked Torts this morning about the dry sale sealer pairing. Basically, Mm. like, look, we all know that they were bad last game. Have you lost faith in their chemistry and that long-term possibility of a pair? And he basically said, look, we're going to start with that pair tonight, but if it goes bad again, I reserve the right to change it real quick. He didn't change it, but he very clearly dropped their minutes. Understandably so. They were a dumpster fire last game. I mean, I'm less... I'm, I less want to talk about them, in all honesty, because, like, yeah, it's interesting they were they were the third pair. I more want to talk about the other four defense, because I thought York and Sanheim had a really strong game. They did. And I am very much not a fan of the Zamola-Johnson pairing, but if you're dropping Drysdale and Sealer down to third pair duties, you got to move up the Zamola-Johnson pairing to second pair duties. And, look, Johnson wasn't perfect. He takes that kind of dumb penalty to give them the two-man advantage to tie the game. I knew there were some people on Twitter that were saying it wasn't a penalty. It sure looked like one to me. <laughs> he I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe that was just Homerish. I, I don't know. I was just, I saw people on Twitter being like, oh, that was a weak cause. Was it? Looked like a penalty to me. I don't know. Aye. But he jumped. <laughs> point being is that I thought Zamola was significantly better tonight than he's been in weeks. And it wasn't that he was great, it was just that he wasn't actively bad. Yeah. And, you're taking top four minutes against the team that entered the game with the most standings points in the NHL. I, given the way that Zamul and Johnson have played recently, I would have expected that to be a disaster. That they would have gotten three goals scored against them. Instead, they just played fine. They played fine, and that's all they needed. Given the fact that again, you had Arison playing a really good game, and you had Konechny in vintage Konechny mode. So, props to to the top four. Like, interesting that Drysdale and Sailor were dropped to third pair. More interesting to me that York and Sandheim show they still have some gas left in the tank, and Zamula Johnson wasn't the dumpster fire I feared it could be if they were given top four duties. Uh, I thought there was, I honestly thought Bobby Brink in the last game was one of the few, I don't know if I can say bright spots, but guys who stood out a little bit. Uh, Brink scores tonight, it's his 11th goal, and I thought another bright spot was Noah Cates, now on a five game point streak. Uh, in the first 52 games of the season, three goals. 
Last five games, three goals. Uh, regardless of how this thing shakes out, they still need to win the next two and have a whole bunch of shit go their way as well to make the playoffs. If Cates and Brink end strong, I think that's a good sign going forward. What did you think of those two tonight? Yeah, I mean, I think Brink was good. Brink obviously scores his goal on a bit of a fluky play. The puck goes off uh, Conjure Miller's stick and in. But I still think he was fine. Cates, I thought, was very good. Uh, Cates, you, you look at the ice time, he was third among the forwards in ice time. Cates is a guy who John Tortorella has always loved. I think it killed him to lower Cates' minutes this year. But the guy just was scoring at the level of like a replacement level forward for over half the season. I know he dealt with the injury, so that took some time out of his year. But when he was playing, he wasn't scoring. You had to drop him down the lineup. Now you're seeing the the version of Cates we saw for a lot of last year. We're seeing it at a key time. And look, we've talked a lot over the last couple of weeks about this being an information gathering part of the year. You're learning about guys. And John Tortorell said some interesting things today, this morning, at after morning skate, about, you know, it's not even just that they're learning this guy doesn't have it versus this guy does. It's that, you know, in some cases, Connect me being, I think, a glaring example, they're learning what pitfalls guys can fall into in these situations. Like they're learning that Travis Connecty has a tendency in big games to maybe try a little bit too hard, which allows them to coach him and maybe have that be the the, the, the focus, the the part of that point of emphasis with him when he's going into a playoff series. Like TK, we know you've got the energy. You just got to calm down a little bit, like dial it from 15 to 13. And <laughs> we got something. It's information gathered. I think they're learning some things about guys like Konechny. But with somebody like Noah Cates, I think they're learning that Noah Cates is the kind of guy who steps up in games like this. You know, this is a guy who played for for Minnesota Duluth in college, a powerhouse pretty much every year. I think he just might be a guy who just kind of knows how to step up in big games. I'm, I'm getting that impression. Because as bad as this team has been over this run, you just said it. Noah Cates on a five-game point streak. He's one of the few guys who, even when they were losing, I was like, he's been a bright spot. So, look, maybe this is just a, a well-timed hot streak for him when everyone else is in an ill-timed cold streak. But I've liked what I've seen from Noah Cates, especially because it does seem like he's one of the few guys that appears to be upping his game when the games get more meaningful rather than getting worse. His goal tonight was sick. His goal was sick it tonight. Was sick. Uh, Charlie, I, 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 I put out a tweet earlier. Uh, I put out a poll at the very end of the game. It, are we in LFG mode or too little too late? And I had a tweet like, you know, it's, it's nice to see they didn't quit. Uh, the, you put the article out uh, today, how important these last three games are. Like, we just need to see them. Maybe it was yesterday. I don't know. Days aren't Days real. Days aren't real, yeah. Uh, like, exactly. Do you think right now, like, a performance like tonight, and let's say they carry it over for the Devils and Caps games. Let's say they look good. Is this, oh, well, the pressure's off, as I'm seeing so many of my mentions. Like, of course they look good now that they've oh, blown it. The pressure's off. On. Or is it a good sign that they seem to have, at least for one night, rebounded? Well, I think it's a good sign. If, if you're someone who doesn't want this team to obviously quit on the coach, I think it's a very good sign mm -hmm. because – it shows that, like, the Montreal game wasn't them just mutinying on the guy and being like, we're not going to play the last five games until they fire the coach. So it's a good sign, certainly, from that perspective. I think it's a good sign because it shows they still have pride. It shows that they still care about how the season ends. As I, as I said yesterday, it's not like they are in between periods, fiddling away on their phones, booking vacation times and tea times for the end of April. Like, they're still trying. They still want this, and they are still showing that they're willing to give the necessary effort to beat a team that entered this game with the most points in hockey. So I think it's a good sign. That said, and I don't know if you guys broke down the standings at the beginning of the show, but, like, it's still highly unlikely they make the playoffs. The Islanders won in overtime, so the Islanders are at 89 points. It's wild points card only now, yeah. Already, with the Flyers, that's, like, the most they can get. So... Third in the Metro, that that's pretty much over. We can mm -hmm. we can wipe that out. But you look at even the final wild card spot. Okay, Flyers are at 85 points. The Penguins are at 86, one point ahead. They have one game in hand. Detroit's tie. They have one game in hand, and their final two games are against the Habs. Washington, I don't even know what 
is with that team. Like, that's the team the Flyers probably can catch because they do play them in the final game of the year and the Caps do have a difficult schedule. But they need both Pittsburgh and Detroit to fall flat on their face in addition to winning both their, in mm-hmm. addition to the Flyers winning both their final games. It seems unlikely. So, my main takeaway from this is not, oh my God, they're going to make the playoffs. It's, I'm happy that they showed some pride. I'm happy they showed the obvious effort. And I'm happy that they've at least for a couple days killed the narrative that this team has quit. I'm happy about that. It is nice that we don't have to have that conversation at least for a couple of days. You know, we'll get through the weekend and then we'll pick it up on Tuesday and see where we are. But it is nice that that's the case. Uh, Kelly, unless you have anything else, I think it's time for Charlie O'Connor's three stars of the game. Let's leave it off the game. Okay. Star number three, I will go with uh, the one C in your hearts, Ryan Paling. Yes, uh, that's two, my one two C, assists baby. tonight. Two assists tonight. I thought he was strong all around. I thought the um, I know they give up a, a goal on that uh, five on three, but I thought the penalty kill on the whole had a good game tonight uh, against a pretty high power power play. Uh, Paling gets the two assists. He gets the assist on the Brink goal, but Brink goal doesn't happen, not even just because he passed the puck up ice, but because he's the guy who puts Miller in the position to deflect that in. Paling, again, Torts is leaning on him, maybe more than I would, but you know what? In this game, it worked. Paling delivered a solid performance. He's my third star. Let's go to star number two. Yeah, star number two is Sam Harrison. He got the dog mask tonight, so props to him. Nice. Um, Arison, I think one of the low-key, and I tweeted about it, one of the low-key big moments of this game. It was in the second period. I believe the Flyers are still only up one goal. And the Flyers get trapped in their own zone. And they're in their own zone for like a good minute. The Rangers cycle them to death. They were actually doing a pretty good job of playing defense, but they were just getting exhausted. You could tell they were getting tired. You could tell that, you know, the... The, the dam was buckling. There were some little little leaks springing in that dam. Somebody takes a... It wasn't a shot that was going to turn into a goal, but it was a shot with real velocity, and it was a difficult shot that was going wide, and Arison nabs it with his glove and creates a stoppage. That's the kind of play that Arison has not made mm-hmm. over these last few weeks. They needed a stoppage. They need to get it in some way, and he reaches out on a puck going wide, has the presence of mind to, to recognize... My guys are tired. I need to get a whistle. And he gets one. And those are the kind of plays he was making all night. I did think it was funny when when I brought up to Noah Cates about getting the good bounce. You know, did that, like, the good bounce on the brinkle. And I said, was that the moment when everybody exhaled? And I think he gave a little bit away in a way that he probably didn't even mean to because his first answer was, was not, no, that was the moment. His first answer was, yeah, and, and our goalie was making some really good stops. And, like, you just <laughs> tell – that, like, that was the moment when yep. they all exhale, when they realize, oh, Eris is good tonight. We can breathe a little bit. Yep. And, like, it was kind of a telling response because it hints that, like, that's really what's been going on here. More than anything else, they were losing faith in their goalies, and that was what was leading to all of the chaos. More than them being pissed at torts, more than the finishing being bad, that at its core— they were never gonna. They were never gonna hang Sam Harrison out to dry and be like, "Yeah, we're obviously losing because our goalies freaking suck." But when Noah Cates his first his first thing of like, "When did you guys start feeling a sense of relief that this might go differently?" And it was, "Well, when our goalie was making saves." That kind of tells the tale. And Sam Harrison, props to you, buddy. You made some saves. You go twenty four for twenty five on this night, nine sixty save percentage. You get the dog mask. You get the Flyers a win. Good for you, Sam. You're my second star. Before we go to star number one, we got a question earlier. Um, do you think there's any chance outside of a relief appearance we see Fedotov again in the last two games? Um, I think Arison gets the Devils game. Maybe if the Flyers lose the Devils game and they are officially eliminated, maybe they give Arison one last look. But I don't know. They might just go Arison the rest of the way, and that's fine. At this point, like, I guess at this point, you, you dance with the one that brought you, and Arison brought you here. So I have no problem if they go Arison the final two games. That's fine. All right, and let's finish it off with star number one. Um, 
Star number one, it's obviously Travis Konechny. I mean, yeah, that, that's a that's a given. He was the best player on the ice tonight for both teams. He was the catalyst for the Flyers, like he has been for so many games this year. He he creates the first goal. He scores the third goal. He was noticeable on so many other shifts where he didn't create a goal. This was Travis Konechny at his best. And apparently he changed your mind about signing him to an extension. So that should speak to the quality of the game he had. Just like Travis that. Konechny, my first star. All right, Charlie, uh, I think that'll do it. Make sure you get that train, get the hell out of that train <laughs> station. You never know what's going to go on in there late at night. Uh, hoping to see you again real soon. That is Philadelphia's number one hockey beat reporter, Charlie O'Connor, coming to us live from MSG. Uh, he'll finish out the season at Wells Fargo Center with a couple of games at home, and it'll start Saturday. We'll be back here with post game Saturday, and Saturday is a big one. Big one. Not just because it's the Devils, not just because it could keep them alive. It's Wayne Simmons. You night. don't don't fuck around on Do Wayne Simmons night. Do not screw around Do on not Wayne Simmons night. Embarrass me in front of Wayne. Simmons. Do not absolutely. And if you want to go to that game. Oh, you want to pay tribute to number 17, mm -hmm. an all time flyer in my mind, maybe outside of Mike Richards, my favorite post lockout flyer of all time, I'd say. It's a solid choice. Uh, and considering his tenure versus how Richards ended, like, you know, maybe my favorite. Uh, you got to use game time to get in on that action. But whether you're trying to check out Wayne Simmons Day or the last day of the season against the Caps or. You know, it's baseball season. You want to go check out these fightings. You got to use Game Time because Game Time is now an authorized ticket made marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. Game Time is the place for last minute ticket deals. I've been telling you that all season. You get the killer last minute deals, not to mention the all in pricing. It's awesome to see what you're going to pay before you click a bunch of buttons and are already mentally like, I'm going. Oh, no, it's a hundred more dollars than I expected. You don't get that with game time. They give you the all in pricing and you get views from your seats. You'll know what it's going to look like. So there are no surprises when you get to the venue. And there's the lowest price guarantee. If you find tickets in the same section row for less, game time will refund you 110% of the difference. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. Told you about the last minute deals. You can save up to 60% off buying last minutes for sports as well as concerts, comedy, theater, any event you want to go to. You get those deals. And the flash deals. Save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. For limited time, all users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the Game Time app with code FIRSTPITCH. Terms apply. That's code F I R S T P I T C H for $20 off through April 14th only. So you only have a few more days to take advantage. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And while we're here, let me tell you about Olipop. I am, mm. Olipop is growing on me more and more every day as I discover the new flavors. I was talking to Bryn before the show. She's a big fan of the uh, root beer, as am I. And I have long thought, much like the Hanson brothers, none of that stinking root beer. Uh, let me tell you about Olipop, though. Olipop is the world's first functional soda with a classic soda taste and the benefits of plant-based fiber, prebiotics, and other botanical ingredients to support gut health. Olipop is a new kind of soda with only two to five grams of sugar per can, as well as nine grams of fiber per can. If you're drinking a regular soft drink, I want you right now to look at the label and see the sugar content. I just told you Olipop's two to five grams. It's going to be 10 times that minimum for whatever you're drinking. I guarantee it. Listen, two out of every three Americans say they suffer from digestive issues. 95% of Americans don't get the daily recommended amount of fiber. Olipop is tackling both of these issues with a drink that tastes just like soda. Prebiotic fiber is the food source for the beneficial probiotic bacteria in your gut. And Olipop has nine grams of prebiotic fiber in every can that can help support your digestive health. You've heard me make the joke before. If you've got a gut like mine, you got to keep it healthy. And Olipop is available online and available in almost 30,000 retailers nationwide, including their most recent launch at Wawa. Now you can get your snack, you can get your lunch, and you can get a delicious soda that won't leave you feeling guilty if you go with Olipop and the two flavors they've debuted. Classic root beer and strawberry vanilla. I'm a fan of both. 
And honestly, those are not on my list of soft drinks I would typically buy. And you can get them online as well, as well as all the other flavors. Go to drinkolipop.com and use the code PHLY20 for 20% off your next order. Discount only applies to one-time orders, not subscriptions. Olipop sold online, drinkolipop.com, and it's available in 30,000 retailers. Told you about Wawa, but you can get it at Target, Sprouts, Wegmans, ShopRite, GoPuff, wherever you do your shopping, get your Olipop. All right. Super <sighs> chat. We have another super chat. It's oh, Vince. it's Vince. <laughs> Vince says, how do you feel about what happened to Arizona? It's wild. It, I feel so bad for the, I mean, we have obviously one of our sister stations, uh, PHNX is in, uh, is in Phoenix and Craig Morgan and that whole crew. I mean, Craig Morgan is, he was like on Chicklets this week. Yeah. Uh, he is one of the preeminent voices and he's, he's down there. It sucks for them. It sucks for the, the fans. fans. Yeah. That organization has just been plagued by incompetent ownership since the beginning yeah. i do think hockey can work there like we've seen like look at austin matthews look at uh Doan's kid who grew up there now like there's dudes who have come out of arizona and phoenix since that team has got there yeah. we know what hockey can do when it takes when it takes hold in an area but like they got nowhere to play no, not having a building is a big problem it is. So, yeah, that's, I mean, I don't want to get too much into this. Uh, I talked to, I talked to Rachel Dory today. I just totally blanked about what I did like you a few hours it. ago. Talked to Rachel Dory today. That interview will drop right here on Ooh, the YouTube page. I like those. Oh, she's great. Yeah. Um, that'll drop right here on the YouTube page tomorrow. We talked plenty about uh, the Arizona Coyote situation. You can check it out there tomorrow. It'll be uh, up. But let's just take a look real quick. At the uh, at the standings, Charlie was referencing. Um, it's still it's just wild card for us now. Two games left, that's and it. they can't win. Yeah, they're at eighty nine, and that's all the uh, really because the Flyers have the regulation win tiebreaker. I don't know. I, it, there's probably other things, but whatever it is, uh, and the Islanders do have a game in hand too, as well. So they are so up if, on points percentage. Wait, if the Islanders lose out and the Flyers win out then we have the tiebreaker. Yes? I think so. It's too much math for me. I just have to let it happen. Uh, they still have the points percentage, though, because of all the overtime losses. So I guess that, that would be thing? it. I don't know. It's the first tiebreaker is points percentage. But I always expect that to be equal at the end of the season. But I guess because they have so many points in overtime, that would be the first one. God, the first tiebreaker with overtime. The first there. tiebreaker should be regulation, regulation wins. wins. Yes, but it's not. They fucking so, love the loser. I point. don't know. It seems as if the second wild card is the only door that's yeah, open. Just, Pittsburgh is holding more. that, and they have the. Uh, they're at eighty six right now, and they have a game in hand on the Flyers. Flyers would need to get to you know eighty seven, eighty nine, and Pittsburgh would have to obviously come short Penguins of eighty nine. A tough few games though. They do. I. They have Boston, I think, and I forget who else, but they're not they're not easy opponents. So they're I mean It's highly unlikely the Flyers there get There are ways. There's ways. And I feel better about it today than I did yesterday. It's I, I do feel better, but if they Because it's so unlikely. Yeah. Is it better that they just lose? No. Not after tonight, Bill. Yesterday, yes. Today, no. It, I mean, imagine they were on the broadcast today, the anniversary of, of Brian Boucher's 82nd game win with his little dance coming out of the net. Imagine if we get to this Washington game and that's the one they got to win and they clinch <sighs> it again. It's so fun. Let yourself have fun. It's sports. I do think that like as much as we say, let yourself have fun. There are reasons nah. for the future this rebuild to want to see this team finish lower in the standings. Listen, I was, I was there for them losing out for that reason, but they didn't do that. So now I'm back on the other side. That's how it works. And they are going to, on Saturday, it could be completely different. I make no promises to any of you, but for now, mm, back in, let's go. All right. yeah, it's, let's fucking go. I am part of LFG movement just because, yeah, I, 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 this was always Where's when I was working the overnights with Big Daddy Graham in the midst of the Sixers process. It was a nightly debate about, you know, losing on purpose, etc. You all remember it, uh, especially the local listeners here. And he would say something that was so simple, but true. 
a Philadelphia player takes a shot, I root for it to go in. That's right. A, an opponent takes a shot, I root for it to not go in. He's a smart and as man. much as I fully understand the idea of let's see if we can get a top 10 pick, let's see if we can get a little lucky in the lottery, I like when the Flyers win. It's what we're supposed to root for. Like, I, I hate to break it to everyone watching who's obsessed with losing, but we're supposed to be wanting them to win. Like, I, I'm sorry. It's, like, I can't go in. Like, I can take a macro view in the off season. I can think about big picture shit later. When we're talking about games, there's not a situation in which I, even when I say I hope they lose out, I'm watching a game and I'm, I'm wanting them to win. I just looked at the poll too. The folks... Let's Our, take a look at the yeah. uh, final poll I put up. You people. After beating the President's Trophy leading Rangers, and it looks like they're still in command. Last I looked, it was 3 nothing Jets over the Stars. So despite losing, yeah. the Rangers are going to stay in the President's Trophy lead. After beating the President's Trophy leading Rangers and MSG, LFG, let's fucking go, is at 36%. Uh, what am I going to do with you people? And too little too late is at 63.8%. So it's even more on the too little too late scale. I understand and I, I feel for these people. I understand where they're coming from. I just like, they worked so hard to get here. Yeah. I get that that eight game losing streak was a kick in the dick. But the resilience is what has made them who they are all year. I got to tell you, picking 12th or picking 14th is not going to change the franchise. It's just not. And maybe these so, other teams uh, behind them will win and they'll end up I like mean, with the 10th or 9th pick anyway. But maybe not. All right. Before we get out of here, I got to tell you about becoming a diehard. Do it. Uh, something that Charlie actually published today was part two of his monthly mailbag. He's a little behind. This is the March mailbag. It's, Come on, Chuck. It's been busy. Uh, but he always makes part two for diehards only. And the only way to get your questions answered is if you're part of the PHLY Flyers Discord. The only way to get into that Discord is to become a diehard. So if you want to harass Join Charlie and ask the dumbest shit imaginable, he has He's promised. Contractually any, obligated to answer. He has promised yes. the Discord members, anyone who asks a mailbag question, he will answer it in his mailbag articles. Ooh. And that's just one of the many, many benefits of becoming a PHLY diehard. So if you're a fan of us, if you want to support what we've done over this season and what we're going to continue to do as long as they keep the lights on here for us, go to allphly.com and become a diehard member. I mean, you get a free shirt when you sign up. You get access to the Discord, all the premium content, the stuff we have coming in terms of premium content, uh, less Bowen just joined all of his articles. They're going to be behind the paywall. Jim Salisbury is going to be part of our Phillies uh, coverage. He is also going to be behind the paywall. I mean, I just named two legitimate legends, two guys yeah. I grew up reading in this town. The only place to find Good them deals. is going to be at allphly.com if you become a diehard. All right, Hanks, you got anything else tonight? Nah, I'm good. All right, that'll do it for us. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for hanging out. If you haven't already, I see you know what to do. Subscribe, like subscribe. reminders, Twitter, Ring the bell. podcast, etc. Until next time, my name is Bill Matz. That's Kelly Hinkle. Let's finish strong. Two and zero. Yeah. We all city like the mayor.